What exactly are the roles and responsibilities of a nonprofit board of directors? Before we get into that, a quick refresher. A nonprofit board of directors is the recognized leadership of a nonprofit organization. For those just starting a nonprofit, you are likely in the process of recruiting a board of directors who is going to be your leadership team while you're getting things up and running and is generally in most cases required in order to start a nonprofit and get your official status recognized by your government as a nonprofit. If you're working with an existing nonprofit, a board of directors governs that organization. Perhaps you're also just an aspiring nonprofit board member. Sorry, I shouldn't say just. Nonprofit board members are wonderful and amazing. Anyway, perhaps you are just an aspiring nonprofit board member and you're wondering what's expected of you. So in this video, I'm gonna cover all of those situations and talk through eight of the key nonprofit board of directors responsibilities that will ensure that your board can run your organization effectively and ethically. Welcome or welcome back. My name is Amber Melanie Smith. I'm a nonprofit founder, executive director, former board member of my nonprofit, and I make these videos here on YouTube all about nonprofits, fundraising, entrepreneurship, helping change the world, and all of the things that are related to change making. I really hope that you find this video helpful. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. All right, so let's get into this. Nonprofits of all shapes and sizes are generally governed by a nonprofit board of directors as we covered a few moments ago. If the organization has a large enough budget or is large enough to have paid staff, then generally the paid staff is gonna be doing the day-to-day -day activities to run the organization from managing the nonprofit's programs to bookkeeping, etc. And in that case, the board is playing a leadership role that is more supervisory and advisory and policy making and governance. If you, on the other hand, are part of a smaller nonprofit or a new nonprofit, you might not have paid staff yet, in which case your board of directors might be taking on some of the same types of roles and responsibilities that staff typically would, running those programs day to day, dealing with accounting and so forth. That's usually what's called a working board. Every nonprofit's gonna be a little bit different in how their board of directors operates and works, but in general, your board of directors should represent the community that you are serving, which means representing the voices in your community and meeting the unique needs of your specific community. But no matter where your nonprofit is located and how big or small it is, there are some key uh, responsibilities that are the same across the board, and I'm gonna talk about eight of those now. Responsibility number one is acting ethically and avoiding conflicts of interest. Board members should operate with the highest level of ethics. They are, after all, the recognized leaders of an organization that is meant to be accountable to the public that it serves. They should avoid taking actions or voting in such a way that provides them with inappropriate personal benefit or a conflict of interest. A few examples of a conflict of interest might be something like, um, let's say a board member has a private business that they run, that's their normal job when they're not being a board member, and um, they have a service that the nonprofit needs and the nonprofit just tires them without even looking at other options, or the, the board member influences the board to vote to hire them and pay their private business. Another example might be, um, Let's say a family member is a candidate for a paid job at the nonprofit and the board member um, votes on hiring that family member or what their salary should be. That's a conflict of interest. Another example might be um, sharing private donor information with other organizations or businesses outside of the nonprofit. That would be a conflict of interest and also a violation of the donor's privacy. So in summary, board members should know what uh, ethical behaviors are expected of them and then adhere to those ethical standards. The second key responsibility of nonprofit board members is voting on and approving the annual budget for the organization. So the board should understand the organization's financial needs and then be able to make good faith decisions and predictions and create and vote on the budget for the next year of the organization's operations. 
They should base these decisions on the requests and information provided by uh, people on their team working on the ground. So if they have staff for an organization, those staff are, are going to know what the needs of the organization are more urgently, more day to day. So um, listening to those recommendations and requests and needs. They should also be basing their decision on the budget on the environmental situation that that organization is in at that time. For example, if um, you're in a community and that community is facing a recession, then maybe the board would decide it is a smart idea to tighten the organization's belt for next year's budget. So once all of the feedback and uh, requests and recommendations for the budget are collected and a draft budget is made, the board discusses it and votes to approve it. The third responsibility of a board member on a nonprofit is creating and voting on important policies for the organization. So the board is um, developing new policies that the organization might need. They're also regularly reviewing old policies and making any necessary updates to keep up with the needs of the organization or the times that we're living in or whatever the case may be, making sure those policies are up to date and serving the organization well, and then voting on the adoption of those policies policies or the revised policies. A few examples of policies that we might be talking about here, we could be talking about the organization's bylaws, which of course are the documents that describe how the organization will govern itself. We might be talking about HR policies like a parental leave policy or paid time off policy for paid staff. Other things might include updating the organization's code of ethics or whistleblower policy, or if your organization doesn't have these things yet, creating those documents. The fourth responsibility of a nonprofit board member is representing their organization in public and growing the organization's connections. Board members should be ambassadors and spokespeople for the organizations that they serve. They should be out there comfortably and confidently sharing the message of their organization and its mission at public events, speaking, doing presentations, networking events, other types of special events where they can build relationships, and then bringing those relationships back to the organization. The fifth and very important responsibility of nonprofit board members is raising money for the nonprofit. I smile because this is the one that I hear so often from nonprofits that they struggle with. Fundraising can be a little scary if you don't know how to do it, if you don't have a lot of experience, and so I get it. It's, it's hard to get yourself out there and fundraise as a board member, but all board members should be in some way, shape, or form participating in the process of raising money to support the organization's mission. And the great thing about this is there are actually many different ways that board members can be contributing to raising money for the organization, and not all of them involve directly asking people for money. You can be researching opportunities for funding. You can be sending emails just making introductions to uh, if you have staff who handle some of the development. You could be writing thank you notes to donors, which is an important part of retaining those donors. There are lots of different ways to be involved that um, can further the goals of fundraising for the nonprofit that board members should be a part of. The sixth responsibility of a nonprofit board member is selecting, hiring, and voting on an appropriate salary for the nonprofit's executive direct director. <laughs> director. <laughs> The board does this because the executive director is typically the top paid staff position at a nonprofit organization. This is like the CEO, the person managing all of the day-to-day -day operations of the organization. And so the board is like their boss, so they have to hire them. But once the executive director is hired and in place, it's typically the executive director who oversees hiring other staff who operate um, under their umbrella. And this is important to note, uh, and I've mentioned this in several other videos, but even if you are the nonprofit's founder and you hope to work full time for the organization one day as paid staff, the board still has to vote to hire you and determine what your salary is. Otherwise, it is a conflict of interest. The seventh responsibility of nonprofit board members is recruiting new board members. 
Typically, nonprofit board members serve finite board terms. These often end in maybe a couple of years. That's a common length of time that I've seen. But once those term limits are up, the board members will need to fill those empty seats again. So the board needs to be developing or carrying out the board's recruitment process, collecting interest or applications from board candidates, interviewing or vetting them in some way, and then inviting the candidates to join the board that the rest of the existing board has voted to bring on. Ideally, after that, the board will also help onboard and train new board members, perhaps with the help of staff if that nonprofit has staff. And the eighth very important responsibility of a nonprofit board member is governing and monitoring the organization's progress and challenges. The board should generally be staying up to date with the progress the organization is making towards achieving its mission each year. And also with any of the predicted upcoming challenges or obstacles the organization could be facing in achieving their mission. And when an organization has staff, the staff would be working in partnership with the board to deal with some of these challenges. An example of a challenge might be something happening globally or even in your local community. Uh, one example might be a gas shortage. If you are a nonprofit that makes meal deliveries to um, seniors living at home, then a gas shortage is probably going to affect your mission in some way. There's also larger scale, longer lasting challenges that nonprofit boards and staff should be navigating together. And that is an example might be something like a pandemic. The board's role in this is to advise, to guide, and if it comes to it, if, the, if it's necessary to do so, to help develop and vote on policy that will um, change the way the organization works in order to deal with these challenges. So I want to hear from you. Are you serving on a nonprofit board or are you engaging with a board as you're starting a nonprofit or working with a nonprofit? Did I miss anything? What are some of the other responsibilities and roles that you give your board members to help uh, make sure your organization can succeed? I'd love to hear about it, so share in the comments below. As always, if you are seeking training or resources to help start a nonprofit, check out my website, founder2fulltime.com. And of course, check out my group on Facebook, Change the World or Bust. We've got lots of nonprofit folks, change makers, social entrepreneurs, etc. in there, um, sharing tips and strategies and encouragement. So hope to see you in there. Thank you again for watching. Hope to see you next time. Bye.